Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Mystical. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. I hope everyone has a safe holiday. And today, I am going to be bringing you something I never thought I'd be saying, but a fist weaving PvP guide. I've been getting asked a lot about this type of video, a guide on it, and today it's finally here. So today, this video is going to bring you racials, talents, rotation, everything you need to know to fist weave in PvP. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. I want to quickly talk about why you want to fist weave. First of all, fist weaving is literally the most fun you'll ever have playing this game. I'm not even kidding. No bias at all. Most fun play style you'll ever have in this game. But more importantly, it's really good in twos. Really good in twos versus casters that you have a lot of uptime on, especially when you're playing with someone that can stun a lot. So if you're playing against, uh, what I do is, you know, I am I don't fist weave all the time. I fist weave in certain situations. So if you're playing against any caster, like a demo warlock, like a shadow priest, a mage, anything that isn't mobile. Actually, the other, just the other day, I played I played a game versus a demon hunter because we lost twice to them. Fist weaved, we won because you do so much damage, you do so much healing with it. So keep that in mind. Very, very fun play style. Very good tool to learn, especially in twos. I wouldn't recommend it in threes. It's really not that good because of the RNG and the healing. But in twos, very powerful. Um, again, play if you're playing with an Asa Rogue, a Feral Druid, Demon Hunter, Death Knight, anything, even a Demo Warlock, anything that has those consistent stuns that can keep the target stunned and you can have a lot of uptime, you're going to do so much damage. You're going to be able to do, like, you can almost do as much damage as your DPS. So very fun, very, very fun play style. Highly recommend anyone learning it. And uh, it's just so much fun. Now, not much changes when it comes to races, but I would say for Alliance, you do want to be human. You get the ability will to survive that gets you out of stuns, which allows you to use a non-medallion trinket. So you could use your un unused trinket with the insignia, and you get a haste proc with a uh, increase to stats, which is really good because it's on a one-way cooldown lines up with the crane. So I'd say the best one for Alliance is human. Again, Night Elf is good too. Dwarf is good for survivability. But if you're looking for you know, increasing your damage output. Human is probably the best. Uh, similar to on the Horde side, Orc is definitely going to be the best. You get Blood Fury, which I think it increases your attack speed. And that's just really good for Fist Weaving because you're doing, you know, mostly melee damage. So I would say that uh, Orc is the best Horde race. If you don't want to be Orc, again, you can pretty much be whatever you want. It, it doesn't really matter now that you have the PvP set bonus. Uh, you can be Undead. You can be Torn. It's pretty solid for the AoE stun. Uh, even Troll could be good for the Haste. You know, the, it's there's, there's options there. But uh, personally, I would say either go human or orc if you're just entirely trying to fist weave. If you're not just trying to fist weave and you're trying to do all different play styles, uh, definitely opt I would opt for night elf over human or human still good. And then still orc, undead, torn, really solid races for horde. Stats are a pretty common question I get asked. There's two different stats you can go with depending on what your goal is. If your goal is to go for a massive one shot on somebody and like a leg sweep if you're playing with a rogue it's a kidney shot then i would go crit versus haste mastery now the downside to this and i'll talk about why in when we talk about talents but it is kind of rng because you could go for a big crit but it's not going to heal your teammate so it's it's a little bit more inconsistent when for healing but it does do big damage personally i like to go haste verse crit mastery and that is a more consistent healing output you're, you're basically just you're going for haste so you get more global so you do more damage so you do more healing so i i go for haste verse you if you're looking for a one shot go crit verse but it, they both work it just depends on your play style now these are my talents i will have a link to it in the description below this is kind of the build i've settled on it might look a little bit different than what other people are playing this is kind of just what i like to play and i'll go through it for the monk talents nothing is really insane obviously you get rising sun kick you're gonna go ferocity of juan because that increases all damage you deal and then you're gonna go straight to fast feet which increases the damage of rising sun kick by 70 percent and spinning crane kick by 10 which is all very good um i do opt to go chi wave because chi wave is actually it, especially in twos with how you know fast it ramps up and dampening any damage is good damage so i would go chi wave and then close to heart is is very very solid so this makes it so you and your allies within 10 yards have eight percent increased healing taken from all sources since you're gonna be fist weaving you're probably being really close to your teammate so close to heart really really good um i go celerity here instead of chi torpedo because having three charges of roll is really good. You know, you can move around. Also, there's shorter distance in Chi Torpedo. So it's really easy to, like, run after people if they're just trying to kite away, but they're not that far away. 
Um, and that's pretty much it for the monk sides. Uh, I do get the slow. I do I do run disable. Really good if you're not playing with someone that has a slow. If you are running with somebody that has a slow, you can flex this a little bit. Um, you could go with either shorter leg sweep or you could go with eye of the tiger. Either of those is fine. But you know, if you're playing with if you're not playing with someone with slow, disable is really good because you refresh it when you um do melee damage to somebody. Now for the Mistweaver side, it this is where a lot of the changes are. And I'll I know it might seem a little bit different than other builds, but I'll kind of explain my thought process behind some some of the talents. So obviously you start with just getting straight to your life cocoon, and then you go a little passive for teaching in the monastery. And this makes it so Tiger Palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time, stacking up to three times, and then each time your blackout kick has a chance to reset the main cooldown of Tiger Palm. So this is a passive that we used to have, and you know, you just like Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm, you get these, and you can do your little blackout kicks, and you can reset the cooldown on Rising Sun Kick. Go for Thunder Focus T, get our Vivify Cleave Heal. Even though you don't use Vivify that much, you still want to get Renewing Mist that has two charges, and then get your Rapid Diffusion, which makes it so your Rising Sun can about Mist apply Renewing Mist. Get your Healing Elixirs, come down here, get your Revival, get your Uplifted Spirits, because you're going to be Rising Sun Kicking a lot, so might as well as get the reduced cooldown on it. And then just go down towards, uh, we got Overflowing Mist, uh, go for Chigi. Very, very important. Get the enveloping breath. And this is kind of where all of the fist weaving kind of comes in. So I go straight left and go get failing stomp, which activates your teachings of the monastery. I'll, I'll explain ancient teachings right here. This is the bread and butter of the rotation. After casting essence font or failing stomp, they added that. Your tiger palm blackout kick, rising sun kick, heal an injured ally within 30 yards for 150% of the damage done. Last 15 seconds. So that's really, really good. Very powerful. So this is that's that's the bread and butter of this whole of this whole build, and then we come down here, get failing stomp, and what this does is it you know puts it uh, you know does an A re on the ground. When you stand in it, you get additional bonuses with these talents as well. Uh, your abilities have a six percent chance of resetting the cooldown of failing stomp if you're in the failing stomp, which is very important. It's a very big downside to this fist weaving build, uh, to just fist weaving in general, uh, is because you need to be standing or be pretty close to your failing stomp. Uh, this uh, ancient concordance makes it so your blackout kick strike three additional targets, um, three targets, and have an additional six percent chance to reset the cooldown of your rising sun kick while you're in your failing stomp. Again, very important. And then you have awakened failing. Your abilities reset failing stomp hundred percent more often. And while you're in it, your tiger palm strike twice, and your spinning crane kick heals three neighbor allies for six percent of the damage done. That last part with spinning crane kick isn't really too significant. Um, Unless you're in maybe even RBGs a little bit when everyone's stacked up and you're hitting a lot of people. If you're not doing RBGs, I would just pay attention to your Tiger Bombs striking twice. I'll explain why. And then over here, you have your one minute Chi G, which again is really important because outside of Chi G, you really don't have cooldowns. You, <laughs> I mean, you have Life Cocoon, you have Revival, but you really don't have many cooldowns. And then you get Secret Diffusion, which is a very, very fun spell. Um, you can get extra versatility when you use it with Rising Sun Kick. Which is pretty good. You could also opt to use it for Essence Font if you're not getting a Failing Stomp proc, which is fine too. But I mostly use it for Rising Sun Kicks for the versatility. And then you go for Invoker Solite, which you gain 33% haste after summoning your Celestial. Which is just crazy because you're already stacking haste. And then you're getting way more haste on top of that. And then I go for Bending Proliferation. I think this is a flex talent right here. You can kind of do whatever you want with this talent. You can go with the Bone Dust Brew if you want. Um, you can even go for another charge with T of Plenty, which makes it so you can get a reset on your Renewing Mist, Essence Font, Rising Sun Kick, a little bit RNG. Um, but Bonus Brew could be a good option as well. Even go for Mana T if you want. You can go for Nourishing Chi. Either of those are fine. I've seen people use Spirit of the Crane. Not really a big fan of this just because you're not really running out of mana at all. So, you know, just use this one flex talent. I kind of like using Many Proliferation. That's kind of what I prefer, but... Yeah, if you have any questions about these talents, you have any kind of like differences in your talents and your fist weaving, please let me know. I'm more than happy to uh, kind of take a look at other people's builds because this is, you know, this is just my build, but, you know, there's plenty of builds out there. So those are my talents. For PvP talents, nothing really changes except for one. You do want to run Alpha Tiger every single game. What this does is when you attack somebody with Tiger Palm, you gain 20% haste. This can only be used every 30 seconds per target. So you can only use it. I think some, someone gets a debuff or something. Yeah, they can't. I can't get the 20% haste, but 20% haste is insane. I think I have like, what, 35% haste when I get that buff, but you can't swap between targets. So if you're playing on doing damage, you can kind of swap between them. It doesn't, you can min max it, but as long as you're using it when, you know, as often as you can, that's gonna, that's the value you're gonna get out of it. So 
Alpha Tiger, uh, pretty much, uh, not pretty much, every single game. Uh, for the last two, I go Chrysalis and then a Peace Weaver. If you don't, you know, if you're playing against a Warrior or something like that, go Disarm. But I think Chrysalis is really important because, again, Miss Weaver has always lacked cooldowns. So having Life Cocoon on a short cooldown is very important. Uh, obviously, you need Alpha Tiger. So this last one is really up to you. You're not really casting that much. So I don't really run Sudden Focus T if I'm playing against casters. If it's a caster, I run Peace Weaver. If it's a warrior or some kind of melee, I'll use Grapple Weapon. Or you know, if it's a rogue, I'll play Eminence because I don't want to die in a stun. But that's the gist for the talents as well. Nothing really changes. Alpha Tiger, most important. Chrysalis, second most important. And then this third one just changed depending on what you're queuing into. Now, before I talk about rotation, I want to go over passives, talents, and abilities that we have that you want to pay attention to when you're doing damage to maximize your healing up. But first, I talked about it a little bit before, teachings of the monastery. So, Tiger Palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time, stacking up to three times. Blackout kick has a 15% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Rising Sun Kick. Think of fist weaving as trying to get as many rising sun kicks as possible. That is your hardest hitting ability. That's what's going to do most of your healing. So... What that means is every time you use Tiger Palm, you're going to get a stack. Your next Blackout Kick strikes an additional time. So you're just going to be using your Tiger Palm, getting your stacks, use your Rising Sun Kick, and then Blackout Kick, right? And then hopefully it gets a reset. Sometimes it doesn't get a reset, which is very, very unfortunate. But you're just going to use your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, boom, we got the reset, Rising Sun Kick. That's a, that's that's the gist of this talent right here. Now, we kind of want to weave in our Failing Stomp as well. Uh, failing Stomp activates our ancient teachings of the monastery so you always want to use this first because then you're not you're not healing you're just doing damage um and this just makes it so again you just do you want to just a way on the ground it does a little bit of damage and then your tiger palm strikes twice we'll you know we'll talk we'll talk about this in rotation but you always obviously you want to do this first and then you can heal the all that healing and then your blackout kicks you want to use your tiger palms because it's that it hits twice so you get two stacks of the ancient teachings so you see we get two stacks instead of one this time because of this talent right here where it makes it so your tiger palm strikes twice so you get two stacks of teaching the monastery and then you just you know you just kind of do it over and then when you get the reset or when your ancient teachings falls you just keep doing that over and over again get a reset and rising sun kick tiger palm blackout kicks i kind of go for tiger palm blackout kick to get two stacks because it's much faster and does more damage which means more healing and you're just getting resets on your rising stun kick. you see look at this healing like it, it's insane it, it's it's so so good um so there's that there's so that's failing stomp that's teaching the monastery we talked about ancient teachings this is makes it so after you cast essence font or failing stomp your tiger palm blackout kick and rising sun kick deal uh heal 150 of damage done uh you will sometimes use essence font it, it is kind of unfortunate when you have to but there are situations where teams kind of know how to play around it they will cut you out of failing stomp which means you're not getting a lot of value out of it which means you might not get a reset on your failing stomp but the buff only lasts 15 seconds and there's a 30 second cooldown on failing stomp so so that means you need to use an essence font to activate it. You'll see it go off right there. So sometimes you have to do it. It sucks, but hopefully you don't have to do it too often. That's why you want to kind of play with people that have stuns. That way you can stun, failing stomp on top, get your damage going, get the reset. That way if they kite out, you could use your failing stomp when they kite out. Now for damaging spells, let's see. We got, uh, I've said a lot, but blackout kick, uh, again, really important spell. That's what's getting the reset on your rising sun kicks. Chi wave, really good. I know the damage is pretty underwhelming in threes and RBGs, but I, I, overall, it, it, chi wave is good. You know, if you're close to your target and you're getting the bounces back and forth, back and forth, the damage does add up over an arena. So keep that in mind. Chi wave is pretty good. Don't really use crackling jade lightning. Um, expel harm it's just a really good instant heal for yourself if you're being targeted you don't really use it while channeling soothing mist rising sun kick obviously this is the biggest heal that you have this this is it this again the whole goal of this build and just fist weave in general is to rising sun kick as often as possible so rising sun kick again you're going to try to reset as much as you can tiger palm is what helps you build up the stacks of teachings of the monastery which allows you to blackout kick more which allows you to rising sun kick hopefully reset it uh, spinning crane kick this i'll use sometimes I, I i will use it sometimes but it's not really ideally you will, you don't want to press this that often because it doesn't do a whole lot of damage and it doesn't do a whole lot of healing and i just want to note because this is this is tricky it's very very weird how it's set up ancient teachings of the monastery does not heal with spinning crane kick it does tiger palm blackout kick rising sun kick very very important Ichiji, which is your uh, main cooldown, one minute cooldown, 
gives you stacks. And I'll talk about it that from also your spinning crane kick. So when you have Chi Chi up and you have ancient teachings up, you're, you can double dip the healing with your rising sun kick, blackout kicks. You can't do that with spinning crane kick because spinning crane kick isn't affected by ancient teachings. So keep that in mind. Very tricky, very annoying too. Very, very annoying. When I was start, first started fist weave, I was very confused as to why my healing with spinning crank was underwhelming because I was hitting so many targets. It's because it's not affected by ancient teachings. It's affected by Chi Chi. So keep that in mind. Um, I will talk about Chi Chi as well, probably right now. I don't think there's really a, any other damage or healing spells. I talked about failing stomp, talked about essence font. Uh, so Chi Chi right here. So Chi Chi, this is a whole nother layer of, of trying to understand the spec. So what Chi Chi does, and we're using the one minute cooldown version. So we have it for 12 seconds, which means we also get the haste buff. Very, very good haste buff. What she does is when you activate it, when you blackout kick, rising sun kick, or spinning crane kick, you heal up to two allies and reduce the cast, the cost and cast time of your next enveloping mist by 33% and you're immune to movement impairing effects. So different spells from your ancient teachings. It doesn't affect tiger palm, but you can use spinning crane kick. But for ancient teachings, you could use Tiger Palm and not Spinning Crane Kick. So what you're trying to do here with Chi Chi is you're going to try to build up some of your damage with Tiger Palm and then unleash it with Blackout Kicks and Rising Sun Kicks. And I'll show you um, I'll show you in a second why. Another little tricky thing about it is when your Blackout Kick hits with two stacks, it actually hits three times. So you get you get uh, an instant enveloping mist. You don't want to waste a charge of of your ancient teachings i will explain that in the rotation uh but for right now that's pretty much it for healing revival obviously big cooldown life cocoon is a big cooldown uh you know that life cocoon puts absorption on you and then puts uh your hots on the target uh, your new mist developing mist which is really good revival obviously dispels everything and usually i use it with peace weaver which is is pretty solid your thunder focus t you're you're really just using this with the rising sun kick to try to get as many rising sun kicks as possible there's really no other reason to use anything else besides that so yeah those are the passives those and your talents for you know your spells you're gonna be using if you have any questions at all of course please let me know but that that's your main those are your main damaging spells all right we are here we have our haste from our stats we have our talents pvp talents we understand what spells to use. So now we are going to be focusing on the damage slash healing rotation. So the healing rotation is pretty simple. It's do as much damage as possible. So it's mostly a damage rotation. And I'm going to show you kind of what you're going to be doing. So first and foremost, when you're queuing into a game, obviously put your statue down. Put your port up because you, you can die. That's the weakness to this is you, you, do, you can die still. And obviously what you're going to want to do. Is you're gonna to want to activate your ancient teachings. So you're gonna do that with either Essence Font or Failing Stomp. I would recommend going Failing Stomp because it's half the mana, and then you get value out of it. So again, Tiger Palm gives you the Alpha Tiger and gives you the teaching the monastery, and then you're just gonna black out. You're gonna Rising Sun Kick and Blackout Kick. That's 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 pretty much when you're in your Failing Stomp. That's really the rotation that I use. You could, if you have time for it and you need to build up the damage, you could go for two Blackout Kicks to get three stacks. But sometimes you don't have the globals, so I just go for like one Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick if I have it, then Blackout Kick, and then I got the reset on Rising Sun Kicks. I mean on on Failing Stomp. So I'm just gonna press that again. And again, we're gonna use our Rising Sun Kick. We're gonna use our Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, get the reset, Rising Sun Kick, and you just Tiger Palm. Blackout kick, rising sun kick, tiger palm, blackout kick, rising sun kick, over and over and over and over again. Failing stomp when you're starting to run out of the ancient teachings buff. And if you don't get a reset at a rising sun kick, that's okay. Don't freak out. Just go for tiger palm, blackout kick. Maybe I won't get it. So let's just say I don't get the rising sun kick uh, reset there. I'm going to just tiger palm, rising uh, blackout kick, then rising sun kick. And you can see the healing I do. I mean, look at this. Look at this healing. It's so good. It's so, so good. So that's the basic rotation of it. You do want to weave in some chi waves. So, you know, if you're starting to run into the fight, th throw a little chi wave because you do want it to bounce back. Uh, and it, any of your abilities reset this, by the way. It's not just damaging abilities. So if you're just in your um, failing stop and you're pressing any abilities, I think you could like activate it to like roll or something. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Um, but most of your abilities do reset failing stomp. Uh, do not forget, we do have the instant vivify. You what you want to weave that in as well between damage rotations. So you're going to use your chi wave. You're going to use your blackout kicks. You're going to rising sun kick, blackout kick. And then let's just say I have an instant vivify. Use the instant vivify, blackout kick, 
Rising Sun Kick, boom, get the reset. You are failing stomp because our buff is going down. We didn't get the reset. We got the reset now. Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and that's pretty much it. We didn't get the reset, so we're going to Tiger Palm again. Right, uh, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. So that is your that is your basic damage rotation. There is, you know, a, a, the next layer of that is to use your Thunder Focus T. And remember, what Thunder Focus T does is it, you know, reduces the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick by nine seconds. So your rotation with Blackout Kick, this is when, you know, you're starting to take a little bit of damage. You know, you're maybe at like 60, you know, 50, 60% damage or uh, health. Uh, this is what I would do. I would uh, obviously, failing some if I have it, little Chi Wave. And then I'm going to Rising, I'm going to Thunder Focus T, Tiger Palm. And I'm going to Rising Sun Kick again. And then Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick again. Because now I have three stacks. I'm going to Blackout Kick, get the reset and Rising Sun Kick. And we're going to do that over and over again. So Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kicks to get the reset on it. And you're just going to keep doing that over and over again. Because at the end of that second Rising Sun Kick that you have, you're going to have three stacks of Ancient Teachings. Which is hopefully, hopefully you get the reset on, on Rising Sun Kick. And there we go. There it is. We just keep going over and over and over again. Oh, and I forgot my stats. I don't think these activate PvP stats, do they? So I have 43% haste if I'm in combat with uh, uh, someone in PvP. So you can just see, like, the, this is the reason I go haste is because you're just, I mean, you're just, there's no downtime in this build. There's just none. You, you're consistently just healing and doing damage over and over. Didn't get the reset there. Going to go for a failing stomp, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. And you're just gonna do that over and over again. If you want to make a weak aura, I would make it for ancient teachings and probably teachings in the monastery stacks, just because they can get kind of overwhelming. But the the most important thing about this uh, rotation, about your rotation, is that you do not want to use your blackout kicks before your rising sun kick because it's so important that you use your blackout kicks to get the reset on your rising sun kick. The next layer you're gonna want to do and learn is Chiji. So Chiji and what she does, I think it's like bugs in combat. There we go. Again, what I spoke about, you get a stack of a of the the buff, and then at three stacks, enveloping mist is instant. So, <coughs> what you want to do when you're going to chi wave is you want to build up your damage beforehand. So what I'll do is I'll tire palm right now again because Chi G doesn't affect tiger palm's healing, right? I I don't heal with that healing with Chi G. So I'll build up my stacks. I'll Chi G, and then I'll rising sun kick. And then blackout kick, and then I get instantly get those this buff right here, the uh, invoke Chigi, and it, it makes it so Velvet misses instant cost no mana, and then you just keep doing that over and over again. Uh, you don't have a lot of time though, so I ideally what you want to when you want to use Chigi is when you just got put in a crowd control or stunned or cyclone. I think there was a game I can show you at the end of the video where it was against Resogir Demon Hunter, and I was I think I got cloned three times in a row. And then I waited until I was cycloned and stunned because then I could just f use Chi Gi freely and not really worry about getting crowd controlled while using her. I just want to do one more TLDR in case you didn't get the gist of a rotation, just so you can have fully understand what I'm trying to what the goal is. Your goal is to reset your rising sun kicks. Your rising sun kick is your biggest, hardest healing, hardest hitting ability, which means it heals the most. You activate your ancient teachings with failing stomp. Now, if I'm running into battle. I'll use a little chi wave. Uh, it gets the bounce back and forth. It's actually pretty decent damage. You know, it's not bad if you get the bounce. Um, from there, what you're trying to do is you're going to get stacks of teaching the monastery through your tiger palms. And the reason you want to do this is because when you blackout kick, this increases how many times you blackout kick, and blackout kick has a chance to reset your rising sun kick. But most importantly, you want to make sure you're rising sun kick because that gets the healing going. Chi wave, of course, use your renewing mist as well. And we got to reset on our, on our failing stop. So again, we're going to do this right. Uh, you want to use your Thunder Focus Team when you see damage going out. Rising Sun Kick into a Tiger Palm, into a Rising Sun Kick, into Blackout Kicks. Got the reset of Rising Sun Kicks. Now we're going to Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. Ancient Teachings is going down. We're going to Failing Stomp again. And we're going to use our Blackout Kicks, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kicks, Rising Sun Kick. And you're just going to do this over and over and over again. we got six seconds on our buff. we got to reset on our Rising Sun Kick. You can see my damage going down here at the bottom. we got our reset on our, we got our failing Ancient Teachings going down, so we're going to Failing Stomp, and you can see my mana is not going down, and I'm doing over a million damage right now. So keep that in mind. It's very mana efficient. Just keep doing damage. There were games, there was a game I did like four million damage. I, it was absolutely absurd. All right, my buff is going down. We're going to Failing Stomp. So as long as you're in the failing stomp, you should be fine with activating your your healing and your with your ancient teachings. 
And then if someone, if, let's just say, you know, my ancient teachings is a healing right person because it's not a smart heal. Uh, just use your life cocoon and just keep going. I mean, just literally just keep going. It puts hots on the target. So just keep doing damage. That's all you're trying to do. It's, it's incredible. It's really fun to play. I want to talk about chi rotation again as well, just so there is a very deep understanding of the rotation. What you're trying to do when chi is active is get to your three stacks of chi so you have instant enveloping mist. This is done from, it's actually very easy if you're in your failing stomp. What you want to do is you want to tiger palm, blackout kick, rising sun kick and then you just do that and you got your three stacks because what it does is blackout kick hits three times when you have two stacks eight blackout kicks and then blackout kicks depending on how many stacks you have so very very important all you have to do when you're in when you have chiji active when you're in your failing stomp is to tiger palm and blackout kick once and that's all you get three stacks so what you'll see me do is you'll tiger palm blackout kick tiger palm like this is like the one time where I mean you could weave in a rising sun kick as well, um, but if you're at a relative like high health, you could just throw an enveloping mist out on somebody and then just go back to do, doing your rising sun kicks um, to get stacks. You could also use spinning crane kick to get stacks of Chigi, but for the most part, um, I'm kind of just tiger palming and blackout kicking and weaving in a rising sun kick. But you're just trying to get the three stacks of enveloping mist again. Here I'll show you one more time. Obviously you're going to use your chi wave, you're going to use your failing stomp, and then tiger palm to get the stacks because it doesn't affect chi -G. and then chi -G, blackout kick boom instant and then you're just gonna tiger palm again blackout kick instant enveloping mist and that's it's so good it, you're just you're just it, these are instant and free by the way and then you can use thunder focus and enveloping mist if you want to um get uh just a big heal but that's that's pretty much it for chi -G. there's really nothing else to it as long as you're in your if you're not in your failing stomp it is a little bit more awkward then that's when you kind of go for rising sun kicks and your blackout kicks to get the reset and then rising sun kicks and then you can even go for a spinning crane kick while it's active to get a stack but that is the rotation while chi is active very simple when you're in a failing stomp you if you're not in failing stomp you're just gonna be tiger popping and blackout kicking and rising sun kicking more I spoke about this in my caster guide, but for defensive rotation, it's actually a, it's very important because you're in the fight and you don't have an armor bonus from anything. You have you have no armor bonus, so you need to make sure your port is positioned correctly behind a pillar. You know, if you feel like you're gonna die or if your team's gonna go, you play eminence. It's okay because what you can do is if you know team is targeting you and they're standing like you know let's just say you're you just use failing stomp and you port away. Go for a quick heal, you know, go for a quick enveloping mist, renewing mist, and then you port right back. I mean, and then go back, you get back in that fight because the the less downtime you have, the less damage you're doing, which means less healing you're doing, your teammates can be dying. So you might have to port back aggressively if you're far away just to keep doing damage. Um, but port placement is very important. Your rotation of cooldowns, this build does use Dampen Harm. I don't use Dampen Harm my other build because you're kind of playing far away. There's not really a lot of opportunity for you to get swapped to, but uh, Dampen Harm, Diffuse magic and healing mixers are your bread and butter. Okay, keep that in mind. You also fort brew, so you have four. You have four defensives to rotate between. I would normally, obviously, one hundred percent. Excuse me. You want to use your fort brew, uh, not fort brew. Sorry, your port. Your port is your first cooldown at all times. From there, it depends on what you're carrying into. If you're carrying into casters, use diffuse magic. You know, it's very, very important. Really good for reversing thoughts. If you're playing against affliction warlock or shadow priest, if you're playing against melee, you want to use your dampen harm. Very, very important to have your dampen arm because it reduces all damage you take by 20 to 50%. And it lasts 10 seconds, which is much longer than dampen harm. I think dampen harm is six. Dampen last lasts 10 seconds. And then, you know, you also have your fort brew, which lasts 15 seconds. So if you feel like you're going to get stunned and you don't have port, I would use fort brew. And then in between, while you're not stunned or CC'd, you want to do a little healing elixir. It's off the GCD. So it's very, very easy to just, you know, if, if you're fist weaving, your tiger palm, blackout kick, you know, you're doing all your rotation, just weave in a healing elixir. It's off the GCD. CD. Very quick instant heal heals you for 15 15% 15 of the heal uh of your max health. So very, very important, very good. And uh yeah, overall pretty uh pretty good set of rotations. You just die in stuns essentially, which is very, very unfortunate. As far as macros go, I don't really have much when it comes to fist weaving. I would recommend having a paralysis one, two, three macro or focus macro for the healer. Because in the sense you're kind of like a windwalker. If you ever play against a windwalker, they just in cap you on their go. That's kind of what you're doing. You're what you're gonna do is you're gonna go for damage. You're gonna in cap the healer and you're gonna keep doing damage. Maybe sweep the the target if your teammate has a stun. But that's kind of the 
pretty much the main def um, macro that you want to use. There's really nothing else that you're going to be using. If you have, oh, if you have, um, if you're human, no, if you're orc or if you're human and you're using the on use trinket, make sure you macro it into Chiji or something like that. Um, nothing crazy here, nothing crazy. The, a focus kick macro in case you're playing against the healer that stacks on top of you. Focus kick is pretty important. Obviously, this is the life cocoon macro I recommend for every mystery we've used. That makes it so you don't accidentally life cocoon someone who's dead, like life cocoon yourself when someone's dead or mind controlled. Very, very good macro. Uh, dispel one, two, three. Uh, dispel or dispel one, two. This is just makes it so you can have those quick dispels that D DPS love to have. Um, but yeah, from there's really not many macros that are different from fist weaving. Uh, Tiger's lost one, two, three, and for yourself, just because there are a lot of slows, a lot of classes have slows. So it's very, very annoying. And it's a, one of the biggest weakness of fist weaving is when you can't actually get to the target. So you want to, you make sure you, you know, have your macro ready. And from there, there's really nothing else. No, there's really nothing else there as far as macros go. So th th those are pretty much, those are the only macros I use. That's really the only ones that you need. So if you have any macros that you want or you have questions about, please let me know. Add-ons. I don't really have many add-ons for PvP. I have Dominoes down here, which is my UI, and I use S Arena. Those are the main ones. Big debuffs is what shows the big debuffs. It also shows debuffs here on on people's frames, easy frames. This is what this is called. Um, Omni Bar and Omni CD. Omni Bar is what lets you see different abilities, so you can see different cooldowns from people. Omni CD is what shows my teammates' cooldowns. I would say every healer should use that. And Trophy GC is what's showing my globals down here, which I think is really good for if yourself and for other people who watch. But it's really good if you record your own gameplay and you can see your globals. And from there, it's it's really nothing. Again, S Arena, but that's pretty much it. You have nameplate cooldowns and nameplate auras. This is what the nameplate auras is this add on right here that shows the CC somebody's in or like my in cap or leg sweep. And then nameplate cooldowns is what shows cooldowns underneath people's nameplates. Now, as far as comps go, you want to play with anybody that has a lot of stuns that can stun the target and make it so you could fail and stomp and get value out of it. So I'm looking, you're looking at Demo Warlocks, Rogues, Ferals, Warriors, even Death Knights because they have their Chains of Ice spam. So anything like a Demon Hunter as well, anything like that that has the, the you know, Spamble Slows or Stuns, I'd recommend playing with. I just mentioned the classes. I wouldn't recommend running this in threes. In twos, I would recommend this for, again, versus casters. In threes, if you want to play in threes, again, you want to play with people that can that can stay alive. I would say anything like a Balanced Druid, a Death Knight. Um, Shadow Priest is pretty solid, but again, you have to heal the right target. Um, anything like that that has good sustained healing and stuns, play with in threes. But I would re mostly recommend playing this in twos. And that is pretty much it. This is the fist weaving guide. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. I know that the rotation is a little bit, it's, it's definitely more complex than our casting rotation, even though that one is actually pretty fairly complex as well. Uh, but once you get it down and you f get a feel for it, I would just practice on these target dummies, honestly. Like go first, start with your single target and just focus on this little PVP dummy and then go over here, do a little bit of cleave damage and uh, get the get the you know healing down for it. But overall, very it's definitely worth it to learn. Definitely fun to play. It, it is a lot of fun to play. And yeah, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Hope everyone has a fantastic holiday. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe on your holiday, please. And that is pretty much it. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you later. All I know is I'm sick and tired. 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 Revival it. Oh, no, nope, didn't. Kick that. In cap. I think I get a belt we missed here. I'm going to trigger the sweep. Got both trinkets there. That's right. This is fine that you kiss me. It's fine. Oh, you want to try 1v1 me? I don't think so, man. I actually don't think that happens. Get over here. I 
I'm hitting into thorns. I don't. I actually don't care. In cap this. Where are you going, buddy? Oh, now we're running. Nah, come on. Boom. Oh. Oh man, you're so lucky. I don't gotta shrink it, baby. That's okay though. That's all right. I'm cloned. That's all right. That's all right. I just need. I just need a spinning crane kick. Clone again. I think I can build with Mist here. Incap this. Sweep. Revival. Oh, I guess. I guess fist weaving was the uh, was the answer. You know what I mean.